Hey, everybody. It's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my good friend, Pastor Jonathan Lackey is sure. here with us again. Yeah. Last time you were on Drive to School, uh, Pastor, I, I didn't get to call you that. Uh, you didn't get to wear the shirt. Well, you wore it for, for field work and whatnot. But uh, yeah, you, you we talked about what it's like to be a seminarian. Yeah. Um, but now, now a lot's changed. Where are you? So I like, like, where is my church or where is my current geographical location? So. Yeah, go for it. Okay, Let's go big so, and go small. Uh, yeah, I'm the sole pastor at Grace Lutheran Church in Vine Grove, Kentucky. If you did not know where that is, that's fine. I didn't either when I got the call. Um, we're north central Kentucky, really close to Indiana. Beautiful place, beautiful church, beautiful people. Um, currently, I'm sitting in my dining room because my home office is still not painted. The joys of homeownership, right? Um, no. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. I am doing awesome. This is This is a blessing. That's awesome. So um, in addition to being the voice of our audio reflections, if you sound familiar to anybody listening, um, yeah, you, you're serving the parish now. Um, and you've been out so since the spring. How many months is this? So I got ordained on the 9th of July. I got installed on the whatever's two Sundays after that. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've been in the parish ever since. So over three months now, count my fingers, uh, let's see, July, August, September, October, November, yeah, four, go on four months. Uh, Seasoned four veteran, years. I can ask you anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you can ask. It doesn't mean I'll have a, an answer or even a good answer. You know, um, this is the right time though, uh, because it's, it's still, it's still fresh. Um, yes, nothing's yes. jaded. So I, I get, to, what's it like being a pastor? It is, it, it is an experience like no other. Truly, truly it is. It is an experience like no other. Um, imagine a, a job, and, and job is even too light of a word for it, but like imagine a calling, whatever you, whatever vocation, there's a good one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, imagine a vocation where people, they love you and they appreciate what you're doing for them. Um, Ideally, this should be all vocations, right? But uh, with the with the pastoral ministry, it's really excellent because you just you're not you don't have people who are demanding, you know, let me see your credentials, you know, let me, you know, and they're they're not testing you. It's they love you for the office that you hold because you hold the office of Christ, and they love Christ, and so you you're bringing Christ to them. I mean, you're in the stead of Jesus Christ and they, they treat you like that. And it is a truly wonderful thing to behold. So what's it like being a pastor? It is absolutely awesome. That That's really great. Is it, is it what you expected it would be? No. Um, it's well, okay. So a lot of the things that people have told that people told me in seminary or whatever, it that's all true. Right. Um, so on paper, a lot of the, a lot of the, the facts are true. So you weren't lied to. That's good. <laughs> no, I was not lied to. Nobody pulled the wool over my eyes or finessed me or anything like that. Um, but it's, it, it's all the facts, all the on paper stuff is true, but there's, there's this very reward, rewarding feeling of, like I said, you know, people love you for what you bring to them. And you, you cannot capture that on a little pamphlet or in a classroom lecture. Actually seeing what it looks like when somebody hears what, what comfort sounds yes. like, what peace feels yeah. like. Um, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, it, it's, um, it, it's utterly astounding to watch the gospel that, that would take root with or without you. God would use somebody else, yeah. but um, you, you get to actually see that this stuff matters in a way that it, it's it's always been uplifting for my faith. I remember um, it, it never really went away either, but sort of being embarrassed at first when I would go in to, to people who were having some of the worst days of their lives. And I was yeah. desperate to find the right Psalms to pray, the right hymns, yeah. the, the right words. Yeah. And and by the end of it, like they, they, they were desperate to hear the gospel, but they ended up sort of being the ones who are pretty secure in the faith. And I, I was the one who found a lot of comfort just in the fact yeah. that you're not scared of this. Why am I freaking out? Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, they just, and, and, a, and another thing that I really love is when I'm, cause I love, 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 love teaching Bible study, um, teaching confirmation, anything like that. When somebody says, I finally understand it now, I finally understand the thing that I've heard about my whole life, or even if they haven't been a lifelong Lutheran, 
you know, I finally understand the word that we've been using every Sunday or the things that we've been saying and it, and it finally clicks and I get it. And that, that is a, that's like a million bucks. Honestly, that's like a million bucks. That's awesome. So, um, what's, what's the hardest part about being a pastor? Um, so this is, I think this is true with every pastor, but is especially true for me. You're, you're it by yourself. Um, now that's, that's varying that that's true more or less with everybody. Cause I mean, sometimes you have multiple pastors in a parish. Sometimes you have, you know, a town that's just crammed full of Lutheran churches and you can't throw a rock without hitting a good LCMS church. Right. But out here in Kentucky, and this is, goes back to where I said, you know, Hey, do you know where Vine Grove, Kentucky is? Neither did I. Right. Um, Kentucky is not a very Lutheran heavy area. And see, I'm from a not very Lutheran heavy area. North Alabama is not really Lutheran heavy, but I mean, this is even sparser than that. And so when your nearest pastor is a 45 minute drive away, and when you're going to, and also I'm English district. And so that's a, you know, that's a different, that's a different ball of wax with non-geographic. So, but when your nearest pastor is 45 minutes away, uh, it is, it's a challenge. It's not like it was in St. Louis where, you know, I got in the truck and 10 minutes down the road, I was at village Lutheran church and that was that, but now it's, now it's, it's me. And I got to be really intentional about getting that support. I am supports the right word. I, my, the hardest thing that I learned and it took me way too long to get my head around it was that I actually needed a pastor myself. Yes. Um, I, I went from getting to, to here all the time in, in, my church in um in in my seminary uh, chapel and in my campus ministry and all everywhere I went I heard and then all of a sudden I wasn't hearing it anymore and it, it took me a little while to realize I actually need to to have my own pastor as a pastor yeah um and that was that was probably the biggest sort of pill to swallow initially yeah it's interesting because it's like you said I went from Concordia Seminary chapel every day. I was serving, I was serving in the chancel at village every week and I went from, so yeah, six days out of the week, six days out of seven, I was doing something with corporate worship, right? Mm-hmm. Well, even if it was a daily office and it wasn't always, you know, communion, whatever, but, and also, also I was getting communion twice a week because I was serving at village and then I was also in more chapel. often than not serving in the chapel on Wednesdays when they did communion. And so it's like, I'm getting really fed, like in a lot of different ways. And then you're out in the field and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm it, I gotta, I gotta have somebody bring the gifts of Christ to me because it's, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a sinner, right? I need that forgiveness. I need that absolution. I need that grace and you got to find somebody. So luckily I, I have found somebody and he's, he's been wonderful, but it's been, that was, that was a shock initially. Sure. So, I, I mean, I guess I, I think I could guess the answer to the next one is, um, are you glad you did it? Um, okay. Yes. So I guess then to, to kind of close it up then, uh, if if you happen to be, I don't know, a, a young high school guy out there wondering whether or not they they should be a pastor, what, wondering whether or not they would like to be, what advice do you have for somebody who's kind of just sort of asking what if? I would say that, you know, talk to your pastor. Um, talk to your pastor. And ask him, you know, ask him to be as honest as, as he can. You know, there's some things that, you know, pastors aren't supposed are, are not to reveal to people. Right. Um, ask him to be as honest as he can, but also not just about the drawbacks, but because, you know, sometimes you can get rose colored glasses with anything. Right. Um, on, be honest, not just about the drawbacks, but also about the joys. And, hmm. you know, what hmm. what do you do? I like that order. Yeah. What do you do to balance out the drawbacks, which are hopefully fewer than your joys? I mean, your joys are are great, but how do you balance that out? And then if you haven't been scared away, right, um, honestly calling or emailing the seminary and talking to one of their recruiters. I mean, those men are just excellent and they will they will point you on the right path. But if you are thinking that this is the the calling for you, explore it, try it, you know? Um, and there's, yeah, I, w- I would say absolutely do that. 
Fantastic. Well, Pastor Lackey, uh, come back and hang out. Uh, it's, yeah, it's going to take a minute. Yeah. Um, but you, you actually said something I want to ask you about uh, next yeah. time you're on, if you're willing. Um, okay. What do you do when uh, there, there are not a lot of Lutherans around you? Um, oh, I can talk about that. Yeah, because I mean that's that's a lot of schools. That's that's a lot of life. Sometimes it feels like it's lonely out here, even if uh, even if we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So um, we're gonna have to have you back to to talk about that. Perfect. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. Hey, you take care. Okay. All right. Take care.